So generally, drugs are not working as well as you would expect. Um, so here's just uh, seven of the most popular drugs in the States. Um, for every blue uh, person, this is one who was helped by the drug. So they experience a reduction in their symptoms or they get some benefit from taking the drug. But all of the red ones for each one, these people are either not benefiting, uh, not bene benefiting from it or they're experiencing some kind of severe side effect that is negating the, the benefit that they're getting. And that's actually quite surprising. If you think you go to your doctor and you get a diagnosis and they give you a drug, you expect it to help you. But it, it doesn't necessarily. And the solution is the DNA test. I hope to convince you. <laughs> so this is the standard approach to either clinical trials or also just medicine in general. You have a group of people. Uh, they're diagnosed with some disease. You give them this drug. Uh, and in the end, you have two people who've benefited from the drug. So it alleviated their symptoms or cured their disease. But you have also these other people who it, it didn't benefit them at all. And the solution to this is to offer these people a DNA test. Within this group of people who you were treating all the same before, you can now see there's three different types of people. Uh, and only the blue are responding to this drug. So if you give this people, uh, these people this particular drug, they respond. And if you don't give it to the other people, then you avoid these negative side effects. <clears throat> and you can get uh, even more sophisticated if you then tailor the drugs and give these different groups different drugs. Uh, and then in the end, you get a, a sort of win-win for everybody. So everybody gets some kind of good outcome. And that is the, the sort of the core of precision medicine. And precision, medi precision medicine generally is exploding right now, especially in Denmark. Uh, so there's, uh, there's one from Denmark, but uh, all over the world. So in Korea, they're investing a lot of money into it. In Japan, in China, other countries in Europe. So it's a really big thing. It's the way that it's going. Sorry, yeah. Uh, so it, it's a really big uh, thing. It's a big paradigm shift in how, uh, how we treat people and how we approach medicine. And that brings me to my project. So it's uh, Genome Me, uh, and it's a, a whole solution for precision medicine and for engaging, cust uh, engaging participants in clinical trials. So it's a combination of engaging them during the trial by giving them more information, informing them, empowering them, and also collecting high quality DNA data that can be used for research. The idea is that during a trial, participants will give their DNA at the start. This will be analyzed and then during the trial we'll also track them and record different health information during the trial. And there are two outcomes for this. The first outcome or the main outcome is that participants learn more about their own health, they're engaged in the trial, they uh, feel like they're getting something back. The second outcome is that in the back researchers get all this useful data. It's coupled to uh, information about their disease it's coupled to the diagnosis, it's coupled to any other data that they're uh, uploading during the trial, and this is hugely valuable. It's not necessarily going to look like this, but to give you an idea, this is a 12-month trial, um, and each one of these uh, circles is the next month of the trial. Participants can see the whole, uh, the whole course of the trial from the start, and they're aware that uh, they're progressing through it. When they upload data, so for example, if it's a, a clinical trial in dermatology, if they're taking a photograph of their skin, uh, at each milestone, they upload this information and in return, they get some DNA information back. And this is personalized DNA information to help them improve their health. So in this case, I showed sleep, fat, immunity, it could be all sorts of things like this to help them improve their own health and get some of their DNA information that they've given to the researchers back. And here you can see a little bit in more detail how they stay on track. So in May, they get a, a notification. Hey, it's time to complete your trial mi milestone for May. Please upload a photo. Uh, so it could go like this. It's also part of a, a sort of virtual clinical trial. So they get this overview of their trial. Uh, they interact with their trial through an app. So here you can see they get instructional videos, how to collect their DNA sample. Uh, they also consent to the trial and they consult with the doctor through the app. So everything is very simple, very easy, very interactive. They get push notifications to, to let them know when the DNA has arrived at the lab. Has it passed quality control? Has it been analyzed yet? 
um, when do you need to take photos, all of this, just through the app in the pocket. Uh, Genome, is that a Leo project only? Or yeah. Okay, so initiated by Leo. Yeah. Okay. The DNA samples are an anonymized. So when you have the app and you start to take your DNA sample, you scan the barcode and from this point on, the lab has no idea who you are, you're just a, a sample. Uh, we are the ones controlling uh, the security and the, uh, the security of the, the data and your identity. And uh, it's very restricted who has access to this. And, and who are we? Leo. Okay. Generally in clinical trials, there's a problem with how we give people information. So it's very rigid, it's very wordy, uh, and we would like to change this. So give people interactive, uh, interactive insights and interactive information uh, and more educational content that is actually fun and interesting and people get something out of it in the end. And they should be able to learn not only about their condition and the reason why they have joined the clinical trial, um, but also generally about all of their health. Um, so here is an example for iron, and it should be that uh, even for people who have no understanding of, of any biology, it should be simple and straightforward and show them basically what is going on. So I'm just yeah, showing the slide again. The ones in bold are pretty much the ones that this, this project is addressing and trying to prevent. And now I come to psoriasis and an actual example of how we can use this for skin disease. So yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but psoriasis is a, it's an autoimmune disease. Um, it's very complex, so there's many factors that are involved. Um, and you can see also from Stenia that it's a journey to, do, to discover what your triggers are, to discover what's causing the flare-ups. There are many triggers, so yeah, stress, damage to the skin or breaking in the skin, um, infections, especially streptococcus, um, pregnancy, changing in hormones, all of this. So it's quite complicated. And there's definitely a genetic component to it. So when you have identical twins, if one twin develops um, psoriasis, the other twin has a 70% chance of developing it. And that's kind of also interesting because it's not 100%. So two people who are genetically identical, there's still a chance that you won't get it. So even if you have all the genetics in place that puts you at risk of psoriasis, you won't necessarily develop it. And that's because there's also uh, Complex, complex interaction with the environment, with your behavior, with your lifestyle over a period of time. And you can see here, even supermodels get psoriasis. So just to go away a little bit from psoriasis and show you an example of how we can stratify patients and treat them and change how we, change how we approach their treatment. Typically, when we think about diabetes, it's two types of diabetes, basically type 1 and type 2. And you can see here in this graph, this is looking at 14,000 patients in Sweden. Most of them are diagnosed type 2 diabetes and a small number of type 1 uh, and a very tiny amount, another type. And broadly, their treatment is based on this diagnosis. This was just published this year. Actually, when you look at it, uh, when you look at the um, biomarkers in their blood, when you look at their BMI and their, their height and their weight, when you look at their genetics, you actually see that it's not as simple as type 1 and type 2. There's actually five different types of diabetes. Each of these types has a different uh, disease trajectory. Each of them has a different way in which you could treat them and give them medication. So it's not as simple as just you have type 2 diabetes, you get this medication. It's actually you need to know which one of these groups they fall into to, to treat them the best way. So at the moment, this is how psoriasis looks. 90% of pe uh, people with psoriasis have plaque psoriasis. The remaining 10% are broken up into these other types, so guttate like uh, Stina has. But maybe in the future we will find some kind of model like this where we will see that actually it's uh, not as simple as you have this or you have that psoriasis. Actually, it's all these different groups and we can treat you in a totally different way and a totally precise way. And to do that, we need DNA tests. <laughs>